Detention, yeah, keep talking. <laughs> Stop speaking. Thank you. Now, in the classification system that you have here, there's some important points on the front cover. Let's look at them. This is due Monday, but you'll see it's not all that, it's not as bad as some of you think. So many of you judge how much work you have to do by, by how many pages are there in the assignment and how heavy the thing is. Wow, if life were only that easy. So here's some stuff right in the front cover that you really should, should take advantage of. Here are your key terms. Incredibly important vocabulary that if you don't know them, I don't know what else to tell you. By the way, the last genetics packet, people did it. The people that did it and did well on it, you did well on the test. Could you please start adding one plus one and finally getting two? Get them together. Get your stuff together. Do this work, and you will begin to understand how important it is to prepare for your exam. This is how you prepare, by practicing. Here are the key, term, key vocabulary terms. Here's this words, objectives, key terms. These are key concepts. So when you're reading them, you're thinking, why am I reading this? What's important? Could you read these? They're right there. We've been discussing them all week. We're going to continue next week. Here are the objectives. Again, key terms. You're going to define biodiversity. We're going to look at all the different, you should be checking these off. Do I, you know, how many students tell me, I don't know what I don't know. Well, here it is. Read it. Do I understand this? Yes, check it off. How do you know you understand it? You have to be able to answer questions concerning this bullet point. Is that understood? If you can't answer the questions, then you don't understand it. Don't tell me, yeah, I understand it, unless you can prove to me that you've answered some questions concerning that bullet point. So the first, this is the first page that I'm going to expect on Monday. And what you see here, is it 12 is the first page? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah 12 is the first page. This is an example of what I'm talking about. What you notice is that uh, you have a lot of reading here. Not really a lot, but there's a few paragraphs of reading. They tell you about the five kingdoms. They talk about the new view of the world. So there's two ways of looking at the world. And then you have these domains that we've talked about forever, haven't we? And then you have to describe these three things here. That's your job. This is the first page, page 12, that I expect to be uploaded by Monday. I need you to write in pencil because starting Monday, we're going to go over it. You're going to do it in class. You're going to work in teams. You're going to do some peer reviews, etc. And so you're going to want to make some changes probably. Okay. So I need you to make sure you're writing in pencil as you upload them. Next page. So the next page is page 13. All right? Third page 13. Uh, oh, it is the next page. Uh, this is not right. Page 13 has uh, just some reading to do. And we're going to spend some time today going over this chart and how to use it. Okay? But you'll notice there's that DNA stuff that we covered this week, and, and, uh, and in, it's in the video that, we, that I sent you, and this is how we use it to create this cladogram. By the way, what is a whale most related to? Uh, Hippopotamus, oh, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what it wouldn't be the cow, because look at where the common ancestor is, the most recent common ancestor is with the hippo. The hippo. So next time you're thinking about whales, it's an interesting topic. So the next page is page 14, and you see that there are some questions you have to answer based on the stuff that you'll notice these are the same charts we looked at this week, the same cladograms. It's not a mistake. And there you have some questions you have to answer concerning this. We've talked about these terms. In fact, you've been quizzed on them, right? Morphologic characters, relatedness, biochemical evidence. What's some biochemical evidence? When I say biochemical evidence or relatedness, what am I talking about? DNA, RNA, proteins, right? Very good. If you're going to say it, you're right on. So this is page what? Page two? That's two pages that I expect uploaded. 
two, 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 two. You're not paying attention if you said three. Two, two with questions you have to answer, right? So then here's another page. Here's some more reading, right? No questions to answer here. Just reading. You have to read. So actually, I think who said three earlier? Yeah, it's actually you should upload all of them as one document, but you're right and you're wrong at the same time. Isn't that interesting? So there's only two that have actual actual uh, answers that you have to put down on the paper so far, but you do. I would I'd like to see on pages like this is some evidence that you're actually reading it. So obviously, I'm not going to ask you for Cornell notes. I could. I could ask you to give me a, a copy of your Cornell I notes. Like one. But, wow. Wow, seriously? So what I, would like, what I would like to see is instead of that, just because I already printed it for you and this, this, it seems to be a little redundant, what I'd like to see you do is maybe underline uh, some important concepts. Uh, what I will not accept is a highlight of the entire page. Random highlighting also is not an option. You can highlight, there's some evidence to that, but I'd like to see some, let's see, have some key ideas written in the margins, maybe uh, some connections being drawn, right? I mean, that would be nice to let me know that you are reading it, because what is it, what am I doing on Monday? I'm, I'm grading to see if you've done your homework. And your homework is to read all this and try to answer the questions. And if you don't get the answers right, that's okay but I'd like to see that you've tried to answer the questions. And I judge what trying means, not just writing some random information on a, in, a, in an empty space. That's not trying. So you read this, you look at the, uh, the details, you understand it. You can read about gram, gram staining here. You see these are gram positive, these are gram negative. Read about it, think about it. It's important you understand it. You will be tested on it so that you can consider this uh, a pre-chapter reading assignment for a second and take a look at this. This is uh, a super kingdom of prokaryotes, which are split up into eukaryota and archaeota, right? Archaebacteria and eubacteria. Uh, all right, are we good with that? Yes. All right. So you bacteria can be further broken up into gram positive and gram negative, where you see here you have eukaryotes, eukaryote. Here you have protista. Notice what they're different. Look at their characteristics. They're written here for you. They not only do they draw it and point things out, but they also explain the bullet point format what some of the characteristics are of that group of that. What do we call a group of, or, of organisms? Could be species, could be domain, a taxa. These are taxa. Any, all, any of these can be taxa, right? A species is a taxa, a genus is a taxa, a domain is a taxa. Taxa is just groups of organisms. So you see the definition of the group, of the grouping, in this case, what? Super kingdom eukaryote is here. These are the characteristics of this particular group. And this kingdom... The kingdom in this super kingdom is what? Fungi. Fungi. And the kingdom, the next kingdom in the super kingdom listed is? Protista. You see here some more. Uh, by the way, let's take a look. Let's go back. There is another page, page 16, and then there's page 17. There's more of this stuff. Almost all life on earth is, character is broken up for you on these pages, which is why I think it's so important that you go over it so you have some understanding of the different kingdoms and phylums and genuses in the animal, and I mean, with all the different kingdoms of life. On page 19, you see you have the shark. What is the shark? Chondrichthys, right? And the chondrichthys is what? Cartilaginous fish, meaning they don't have what? No bones. So what do they have instead of bones? Cartilage. So these are fish that have cartilage instead of bones, and, and stingrays are part of those, and you see here uh, sharks are part of those. 
There's more. These are just examples in each group, right? Yeah. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Then you have bony fish, or, or uh, the bony fish include a seahorse. Isn't that interesting? The seahorse or bony fish? And you have amphibiata, and you have uh, reptilia. Aves. You've heard the word aviation? Yeah. Aviator. Flight. It's flight. Oh, that's and these are A, yeah. And aves is the class that birds belong to. Of course, I know. Don't even say to me that penguins don't fly. I know that. I know that. I know you were going to say it. Always someone says it. They're still part of the aves group. Yeah, I already explained to you the history of that, but that's okay. Here's mam mammalia, and you'll notice that there's three groups under mammalia. What are they? The, no, that's not. Those are examples. Those are examples. What are the groups? Monotremes, marsupials, and placentals. So these are the common characteristics of mammals, but then you have the three. Groups that are different from the common stuff. There's stuff that makes these three groups different from each other. And they're listed there. They're listed. You can read it, right? What are monotremes? Egg-laying mammals. What are marsupials? And then, of course, placental animals are what we are. We have placenta. We develop in a womb. So... So let's move on. Okay, there are many. Possums are another example. There's many, many. Uh, uh, koala pears are also marsupials, so it's interesting. Okay, so the next thing is you have uh, page 20, right? And on page 20, now that's the next page you have to actually write an answer on. And where it's not going to be up here, it's in front of you. Page 20. Page 20 says the features of the five kingdoms. There's five kingdoms. You know your classifications, right? Because you were tested on them, weren't you? It's in the video. If you don't remember them, it's on Monday's video. Whatever. We're moving on. But the kingdoms are there. Where are we going to find that information, though? On the pages before. On the pages before. Read. Page 21, as classification system. In that classification system, you have humans. They're hominidae. Oh, that's, weird. that's our what? What is hominidae? Yes. Our family. What's number one? What would be number one? The biggest, the broadest category. Domain. domain. That's right. What domain are we in? Uh, Eukaryotes or eukaryota. Eukaryote. Like karate, right? So eukaryote is where is what is the is the domain we're at, and so there are seven spaces for you to figure out. If you know you have the domain, is number one, and that's right, that's the one you got it. And if that is eukaryote, let's just put eukaryote, and you know you have two, three, four. Five, six, and five is family, and you know that family is hominidae. What are the rest of these? And you got to figure those out. I don't, hey, whatever, figure them out. Honestly, I would start with reading, but that's up to you. And so you can fill in on page 20 and 21 all of you fill in on 20 and 21 all the blanks. Based on the reading, you'll have to figure things out. Is the question about this assignment? Yeah, all right, go. How come there's only seven slots on the uh, That's for you to figure out. So on page 22, guys, this is for you to do for homework. We're not doing it now. I'm just trying to, I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I've given you guys detentions. You just continue. You're being recorded, but it just continues. I don't know what else to do. Classification of the hedgehog. There's an example there for you. 
There's an example there for you on page 22. So you see how they can do, they do kingdom, phylum, subphylum, class, subclass, order, suborder, family, genus, species. The Latin binomial system is genus and species. So homo sapien, homo is what? Is a genus, and sapien is what? Species. So homo, it means human. There's many different kinds of human, right? But sapien is wise human, or wise man, right? Homo means man or, or, or human. So sapien means wise. We are the wise men because of our larger brains. So we're not really that wise, I don't think, as a, as a species, but we're intelligent. We should maybe say intelligent man instead. So anyways... Kingdom, the species, there's an example done for you for the Ethiopian hedgehog. Uh, you can see for yourself what kinds of, how, what, how these organizational systems work. Let's take a look now then on page 23. Okay, so let's take a look at, at this uh, classification key, which is, I think, fairly straightforward. We call them dichotomous keys, which means you generally have two choices. You either go one way or the other, go left or right. That's all you got, up or down, two choices. Hence the word die, right, Dichot or the prefix die. It's dichotomous, right, so it's dichotomous. That's how you spell it. There it is for you. It involves a, a series of steps, linked steps, so you can't go to the next step until you've answered the question. Can we do A together? Let's do number A together. You'll have to answer number one on your own. All right. Main features, blah, blah, blah. You can figure that out. All the answers are here. So you look at A. Let's take a look at A. Look at A. Everyone look at A. It says what? Transparent case. So now let's go. We have the Catisfy larvae. If the larvae has, does the larvae have a portable case? Does it have a case or not? Yeah. No case, case. It has a case. So which way do we go? Right or left? Right. right. We go here. So it has a case. Is it transparent? Yes. Or is it not? Not. See the word not. Transparent. It says transparent. It says transparent. So where do we go? Left. left. What is it? That's your answer. That's really not hard. It really isn't. So you're going through and you're choosing left or right depending on what you need. And you write the answer here under A. That's it. And you can do that. I mean, it should take you, my guess is, if it's taking you longer than this, you need, maybe you need to come to get some tutoring and, and so I can go out one on one with you. But if it takes you more than, you know, something like something like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that, you know, to go through this, maybe it takes you a little longer because uh, maybe some of the words are a little difficult to read, whatever. Uh, you know, if it takes you an hour to do this, wow, I, you, need some, you need to see me, okay? Here is, uh, here's another one of these keys. It's not quite as straightforward. In this key, by the way, we're, in the spring, we're going to go out to the field. We're going to collect water samples from the pond and, or, uh, or maybe the creek in Dome Brook, or maybe we'll go up to the pond in, uh, in front of the art museum. And we're going to collect some water samples, and we're going to check and see the water quality of that water. And one of the ways we can check the water quality is we can look under the microscopes and see what kinds of little larvae are in the water. So the larvae of one species indicates, these are called indicator species, the, uh, the presence of one species indicates water that's that a pond or a stream that's healthy, and in, uh, the presence of another species is an indicator that that pond or stream is unhealthy. So here we have uh, a series of, uh, or key, we call them keys, where here's a description, and then right next to it is 
is uh, a taxa. Do you see the taxa? Yeah. Right? And then it's a species. And if you see here, it says mouth parts piercing or sucking and form a pointed uh, cone with chewing mouth parts but without hardened forewings. Now, where are you going to get this information? They're right here. You see it? It's all in here. Chewing mouth parts, chewing mouth parts, mouth parts form a short beak, chewing mouth parts, chewing mouth parts, etc. Uh, what I would do instead of going backwards and trying to identify, because there's, there's nine of these and there's one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these, right? So there's one of these for each of these. What I would do is I would go and look at these definitions and, and you can use them like the key that we just did, right? And we could say mouth parts piercing or sucking and form a pointed cone with chewing mouth parts but without hardened forewings. Where do you see it chewing mouth parts anywhere? All of them. Chewing mouth parts, not all of them. So th these, which ones are the ones that don't have it? Probably B, mouth parts, short B. I, where's I? I, I, ha I has it, chewing mouth parts and larvae. So B is the only one that doesn't have it. So if mouth parts are piercing or sucking and form a pointed cone, that would be like a short beak, right? Then we would go to two, right? And two says what? Mouth parts form a short, a short pointed beak, legs fringed or swimming for swimming. This fringe is like this. They, where you know, you know what fringe is, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that dangly stuff on boots, yeah. right? All right. So you see, this looks like that fringe on boots, right? So this has fringes. This has a beak, right? Mm -hmm. They're swimming or long and spaced suspension in water. That's what it's for. What is it then? Uh, hemi, 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 hemiptera, hemiptera, yeah. right? So just write, that's your answer. That would be what? What is that one? B. B. And so you go ahead and find these. And of course, you might get them wrong. Do your best. And then on Monday, when we get together and you're doing it in a group, I bet you get the right answer. That's why I tell you to write it in pencil over the weekend. You're writing these in pencil. Let's move on to the next one. In this one, you're looking at plants, and again, in the spring, we're going to go and look at some of the trees out in the front yard here, in the front of the school, in the back of the school, side of the school, and we'll go again over in the park in front of the art museum. We're going to look at the leaves on the trees, and we're going to take a ruler, and we're going to measure centimeters. Look at your paper. It says zero to one to two to three to four, and it says centimeters here. Does everybody understand that these are not directly centimeters? Do you understand that? Do you understand a centimeter is about the, the distance, uh, you know, you know how big a centimeter is? It's about as big as this thing is here, the whole thing, right? This is a key. What this says is that if the distance, if it's this long, is this this length is the same as what? Four cent oh, one centimeter. One. The whole thing is the same as four centimeters. So what do you think the distance is from here to here? Eight centimeters, I think, is a good guess. Yeah, that like what you can do, what you can do is you could take a piece of paper and you could lay that piece of paper right next to, let's assume this is the top of the paper, lay it down next to this uh, this graphic, all right, and then use a use a, a pencil and mark the paper. All right. I'd mark it every centimeter. Basically, you're making your own what? Yeah. Your own ruler, right? Then you take that piece of paper and you, and you move it over to where the leaf is. And you lay it down, right? And that paper's going to have its marks. Where'd you get the marks? You put them on it from what we did over here, right? And you can say, well, how many, how many marks is this? And you can say, well, it's about eight. It's about... Now, you're going to do that. I'm not telling you it is eight. I'm saying let's assume it is eight. You're doing this on your own, and then we'll do it in class. Are we clear on how we're doing this? Yeah. All right. So 
No questions at this point about this process thus far. All right, so let's assume that the, this, the width here of this leaf B is 8. What is a lobe? You can read about it. You can look at the, this leaf. A, leaf. a lobe is this thing here. It looks like this. See it? That's one lobe. A lobe. A bump. The point. The point area. This thing is a lobe. Here's another lobe. How many lobes are there on this leaf? Five. Five lobes. The little one here, that's a good question. Let's not call it a lobe. All right? We're good? Yeah. What does the word serrated mean? Uh, choppy. Yeah, who said choppy? That's right, choppy. It looks like a steak knife. It has little edges, a rigid edges, like a saw. Right? A saw is serrated. Versus a smooth knife edge, right? So there's two, two kinds of knives, a serrated knife and smooth knife edges. At least two kinds, all right? A steak knife, right? Oh, yeah, butter, most butter knives are smooth. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So there's some that have, like, a little bit of ridges, but... All right, so this one here is serrated. Do you see that this one's smooth? This D, letter D, do you see it's smooth? Versus B, which is serrated, that's the difference. Are we good with that so far? Yeah. All right, so now let's go ahead and do this key. Let's use it. So let's do B together. We're going to do species B. We have the leaf. We agree this is serrated, yes? Yes. Yeah. We agree it has five lobes. Adult leaves with five lobes. Where do we go? Number two. We go to two. Here's two. Leaves 7.5 to 13 centimeters wide. How wide is this? Like eight. Eight. So that's, in, that's within this range, isn't it? Yes. With smooth edges. That's not, that's not, that's not right. So it's not, it's not A, right? Right. So we've got to go to B then, to B. Leaves with serrations. Is that what we have here? Yes. yes, it is. Fine teeth, right? Looks like little teeth if you look at it carefully. Along the margin. We go to where? Where are we going? Three. Three. We go to three. Here's three. Five to 13 centimeters. Is this five to 13 centimeters wide? Yes. Yes, and deeply lobed, sure is. The sinus is very deep. What do you mean by deeply lobed? Isn't this a lot deeper than this? Yeah. Right? Isn't this a lot even deeper than this here? So what are you going to put? It's a Japanese maple. So this is a Japanese maple. That would be going where? In, in what? In B. So B is a Japanese maple. That's what you put here for B. Okay, I would put the what? The Latin binomial name as well. The Japanese maple is the common name. The Latin binomial name, Acer palmetum, is the Latin binomial name. What is Acer? Acer is not binomial, it's not two. The genus. Acer is the genus. What's the species? You guys got to watch that video. You took notes. Supposedly, you paid attention. You were quizzed on it. Come on, guys. Latin binomial. Always italicize. Genus and species. Yes, that's right. Good. You would put A for Acer. But A, then Palmidium. Everybody good? We're good? Huh? You think it's 4A? Why do you think it's 4A? Because it says 515. It says small sharp serrations on the margins. And it says distinctive V-shaped signs of the rows. It could be 4A. We're doing an example, so it could certainly be 4A, right? That's you. Got, who's going to figure that out over the weekend? Uh, you. This is all for you. This was an example. This guys, you guys got to figure this out. Then what are we going to do when we get together? We're going we're gonna to come together. I, have, I know what the answers are. It's not my job to tell you the answers. It's your job to figure them out. And then it'll be our job to get together and discuss it. Are we clear? Yeah. All right. Then the next page. Let's look at what we got. What's the next page you have in front of you? It's, with, it's this page. You see it's more of the same stuff, right? We have features of microbial Again, more features of microbial groups. Where are you going to get the answers to these? The, pa the reading. The reading's right there in this packet. So you see there's really not 
it's really, the, yes, there's, a, there's some reading to do, there's some work to do, but is it really that hard? It really isn't. By the way, 4-H groups do this. Uh, 4-H, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, 4-H groups, right? They all do this kind of stuff. We're talking about five, six, seven, eight years old. Do this. You're, so uh, the reason I mention that is that if they can do it, what does that mean? You can do it. All right? So I don't want to hear, I can't do it. This is too hard. That doesn't make sense to me. All right, so then 27 and 28, page 28, same stuff. Look at it. Go over it. We'll be doing peer review work on Monday and on Tuesday in class to, uh, about this. You're going to get a virtual lab on the computers on Tuesday. Uh, page 29, page 30, same stuff, same stuff. Answer the questions. You have a then you have a crossword puzzle. Man, this crossword puzzle is real tough. Real tough. The file, I know, right? That's what I'm saying. But I'm going to hear about it. The crossword puzzle is too hard, is it? Number two, a cross. A phylogenetic tree based on shared derived characteristics. A cladogram. Oh, man, that's a new word to me. Cladogram, what? Oh, we've only been talking about it all week. So you know all these answers. Some of the ones you don't know, you will find in the text. The last two pages, the eating to live, the defending against disease, muscles and movement. Uh, I'm not sure why I added those. So... It's good to know. Yeah, the last two pages. Last two pages. It's fine. It's not going to be. It's not going to be on the test. But you should know it because, well, at this point, you should know it. But they got added by accident, so you don't really have to even upload the last two pages. So what I expect to see is evidence of you reading. I, need, I expect to see answers, right? Yeah. I, on Monday, when I open up the grade book, Monday morning, eight o'clock. I expect to see all those uploaded. I can say, wow, these kids did a great, great, A, 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 A. Am I looking for right answers? No. I'm looking for thoughtful answers. So don't put silly answers because you're going to get a zero anyways. Wrap up. Have a good day. And a great weekend.